The number of my scars are the number of my victories. That's why my praise can never be the same as yours. The number of my scars are the number of my victories. Hey, that's why my praise can never be the same as yours. Excuse me if I get undignified. Hey, you don't know, you don't know. Like I know what he has done for me. That's my song this week and that's the song of the week. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Sessions with Sadia. And this week I want to talk to you about the beauty of your scars. My prayer is that by the end of this session you will not only see the beauty in your scars, but you will also embrace your scars, all right? So come to think of it, scars are God's idea. I mean, I'm talking about physical scars right now. When God designed our bodies, He designed it to heal in such a way that after a wound, a burn, or a sore, any of that stuff, He designed it in such a way that it will heal and leave a mark. I mean, God knows why He left the mark. But here's the thing, everybody has scars. Whether it was from running around when you bruised your knee as a child or you cut yourself, everybody has scars. I mean, I'm talking about physical scars now. And every scar has a story. Like this one, for example. I got this scar in my final year of college. Uh, my housemates and I decided we wanted to um, DIY, make our own pizza at home, not from scratch really. So we bought a store, a frozen pizza from the store. And after preheating the oven, so I was about to put the pizza into the oven, I burned my skin. Clearly this scar carries fond memories for me, but it's not lost on me because I know that um, there are scars that don't necessarily carry good memories and there are things we'd rather forget. Say like when you had your heart broken or when you were first lied to or maybe cheated on or even raped as a child. None of these things carry fond memories and some of these are things that we'd rather forget. But today I want to talk to you about reframing the way you see your scars. Because the thing is, God is interested in your scars. Why do you think Jesus kept his scars after he rose from the dead with his glorified body? He could, he didn't have to have the scars, but he kept the scars. And I, I believe that God is interested in your scars and that's what I want to talk to you about. So today I want, to, want you to reframe the way you see your scar. Instead of seeing it as a failure because that's how we see maybe the mark is there every time you look at the mark I'm talking about emotional wounds now the invisible ones every time you think of something that happened maybe you feel bad it was a mistake you made or something that someone did to you instead of feeling bad about it how about you think of it this way scars are testimonies like the songwriters say the number of my scars are the number of my victories. So every battle you fought, whether your heart was broken, whether it was emotional or mental, whatever it is, whether it was in your relationship, these scars are reminders that you won, that God brought you out, that you're still alive. So think of your scars as testimonies, right? The second thing is, um, think about what happened when you had your scars. Personally, I remember there was a time when I was hurting so bad. It was so bad and I was wounded and everything. One of the things it did for me was it drew me closer to God. And I look back and I, and I, and I wonder sometimes that if there is anything, well, I don't know. I mean, God is sovereign, but think about it. I always wonder if I would have ever been this close to God if I hadn't gone through what I went through. So think of your scars this way. Scars draw us closer to God. It might not necessarily be the most pleasant situation, but think the psalmist say, think, says it this way. They say, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Think of your scars as the, as the things that, remember that time you were hurting so bad and all you had was God, and you, it turned you to God, it pushed you to God. That's a testimony. Scars draw us closer to God. Another thing about scars is they remind us, they help us not to repeat the same mistakes. So if, you are, if your heart's broken, you will learn from that mistake that this, 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 this is what happened and I will not repeat it. But beyond you repeating your mistake, if you embrace your scars, you are also able to help other people. Like for example, when I, understood, when I came to that place and I understood, okay, this is what I, where I went wrong, this is my mistake and I owned my mistake and embraced my scars. Now with the help of God, by the grace of God, I'm able to help other young people and say, you know, this is why I got it wrong and help them and say, don't do this, don't do this. And even for myself, I've learned from that mistake. 
And until you embrace your scars, until you understand that this is not something to be ashamed of. Think of your scars. Uh, this is the person I used to be, but this is no longer who I am, right? When you embrace that, then you can be able to help other people also. And finally, God can make something beautiful out of your scars. And I have a quick illustration for you. Some time ago, we visited the Letty Stewart um, Poetry Center at Waterloo. And as we were about to leave, the coordinator gave me this beautiful bowl as a gift. I mean, just look at it. This is beautiful, right? When I got home, I put it on my dresser. And then one day, in my quiet moment, the Lord started speaking to me. He said, look at this bowl, right? Um, if you look at it, let me show you another bowl that's perfectly glazed. If you've watched the, the Potter's House, the documentary, you'll notice that the final stage in pottery making is the glazing part where the, they cover, so the clay is now covered with this shiny material that makes it presentable and beautiful and all of that. This is an example of a perfectly glazed bowl, right? This one is an imperfect one, but a very beautiful one, right? When the potter made this bowl, these marks that you see, it wasn't designed to be there. These marks came as a result of spill. So if you think of it as mistakes that happened, it was a mistake that happened that turned out to be beautiful. The fire was hot, the glaze melted, and it formed these lines in the, in the bowl. But see how beautiful it is. And then the Lord said to me, this is what I do when you give me your mistakes. I make something beautiful out of it. So if you don't know anything about pottery, if you look at this bowl, um, you think this is perfect, this is beautiful. But I'm sure for a master potter, when they look at this, they will see that, okay, this was a mistake. To you, it doesn't look like it. And that's what God does when we give him our mistakes, when we give him our scars. It makes it look so beautiful that people look at us and they know nothing. They can't tell from the way you look that this is what you've been through. You know how they say, um, how we normally say, I don't look like what I've been through. That's what happens when we give God our scars. I don't know what scarred you, I don't know what happened to you, but I know this much that if you will give God your scars, He will make something beautiful out of it. And it will be so beautiful that when people look at you, there will be no sign, no trace that something went wrong, that you made that mistake, that this person hurt you or this happened to you in a way that only God can. And I hope this message has blessed you, but if you're struggling and you're still Maybe you're in that place where you haven't healed yet, fully healed yet, and you're struggling with pain. I pray that the Lord will touch you, that He will heal you and make you whole. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Until next time, God bless you.